Um, I was thinking kind of out loud that another title for this talk would be the, um, the Transformational Power of Love. And I was thinking of myself for a moment there of when I first got into recovery years ago, um, I didn't love myself very much, didn't like myself very much, didn't like anything really very much. Um, and yet I remember something that somebody, a friend of mine in Al-Anon told me probably after I had been in recovery for six months or so. She looked me in the eye and she said, we know you didn't love yourself very much, but we loved you until you began to love yourself. And I realized the truth of that. Even beyond my, my thinking, beyond my my dreaming, looking back at what occurred in that particular time or that particular phase in my life was the realization that it was not something that I did or could do all by myself. But somehow or another, in a way that I cannot explain, the love of other people allowed me to transform myself and allowed me to find something that I could not find or did not know how to find on my own. You know, most of the time when we think of power, we think of control, dominating something, twisting things around until they become the shape that we want them to be in. But manipulation and control are really reflections of fear and inadequacy. They're not really... What we create out of control is not really what we want. I mean, you can actually feel it in your body. If you, if you imagine that you're trying to control something or really kind of wrestling with something. You can almost feel your whole body just automatically, just even thinking about it, just sort of tense up. Whereas the other side of things, real power, true power, as Yoda expressed to Luke Skywalker, the Jedi's power flows with the Force. It's not uptight. It's not trying to make something happen. It's what Ramisi talked about last week. It is aligning ourselves to the presence and the energy of unconditional love. Going to the Father, she called it. Not something out there, some please, but something in here. Going to the divine consciousness that is already within ourselves. True power comes from my alignment with the divine within. Or another way of putting that is my alignment with unconditional love. Years ago, I mean, you know, I told you that a while ago when, I, when somebody my age says years ago, I could be anywhere between 2 and 50. Uh, anyway, this was years ago. I was giving a lecture <clears throat> on codependency, which already dates myself. Because, right? I want, you know, I really wonder what happened to that. We entered a new millennium. Did codependency just disappear? I mean, all of these workshops and all of, all of the money all of us spent on workshops and retreats for weekends <coughs> and books and all, you know, and, and John Bradshaw and Claudia Black and Sean Wake Shutter Cruz and whoever else was involved in that probably made billions of dollars and moved to Hawaii. Right? And I'm still here with a whole bunch of books. <laughs> still trying to figure out what am I supposed to do next, all right? My inner child supposedly got healed because when the millennium got started, codependency just sort of dropped off the map. I guess nobody has it anymore, right? Well, I'll tell you for a fact, I still got mine. And you probably still got yours as well. But what the point of this was I was giving this lecture and I was walking up and down the aisle, which I was prone to do. I had a microphone kind of hooked onto my shirt. And I used one of the buzz phrases of that particular time of giving your power away. And I remember I said that, and I can't remember exactly what reference I was making, but I was talking about giving your power away. And I walked by, 
this woman who was sitting in, in her chair next to the aisle. And I could hear her in sort of a stage whisper, loud enough for me to hear and probably for some other people here. She said, what power? And it was almost like a knife went into my heart. I said, you know, this woman has lived her whole existence without the realization that she has any personal power at all. None. What power? Of course, obviously, she wasn't watching SpongeBob with me when I was watching with my grandson. Remember that one? A couple of weeks ago, when I said to myself, you know, if I have to watch another version of SpongeBob, I'm going to puke. I didn't say it out loud, but as soon as I th had that thought, all of these little sea creatures surrounding Splint start singing, the power within, the power within, the power within. <laughs> Never forgot that, the power within. That might be a good place to start. Because my old definition, which probably fits today of what codependency is or was, is looking outside for what I can only really find inside. And that's really probably the truth of practically all addictions, if we want to put it that way. It's looking outside of me for something that I can only find inside. And so the most important question I can ask ourselves, including myself this morning, is what empowers you? It's not just about feeling good. It's not saying what makes me feel good. That, that's, that's nice, but that doesn't have anything to do with empowerment. That's fickle. Feelings are fickle. Go beyond feelings. What connect, another way of putting that is, what connects me to the source? What allows me to align myself with divine consciousness? And you probably already know the answer to that question. And you probably know the answer to that question today and maybe other days. But you know what? An interesting thing happens is, I know what empowers me in this particular moment. I know what's going to align me to divine consciousness. But... I need to do this first. I'll do that later. This new space that we've opened up for ourselves, that we've created, phenomenal. I mean, come walking in here on Sunday morning, and you know, the, 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 I, and I, as much as I loved our old sanctuary, we kind of outlived that. It's sort of like the, the shell got a little bit too small. And I don't know what, I know what was going on with me sometimes is, I didn't particularly like this, but it was true, is that I found out that I was becoming somewhat disempowered. That the building, the place, which was kind of some ways sort of sucking us dry financially and spiritually in some other ways, was taking power away from me rather than giving power to me. Come walking in here, look at, what you, look at what you've created. And you didn't create, of course this space existed before, but look at what you've created out of this space, out of this, this sanctuary. The beauty of it, the power of it. You come walking in here and you literally can experience yourself as being empowered, without a doubt. So what empowers you? Music, gardening, cooking? helping somebody else, compassion, giving and receiving are the same. I mean, you make your own list. It was beautiful this morning watching the bell ringers. That was empowerment. People loving to do that and feeling, feeling the sound and the vibration that was coming around. It was beautiful. Thank you, Pat. Right. That's empowerment. <laughs> Don't wait until later. And if it doesn't empower you, why are you doing it? That's my question to me. If it doesn't empower you, why are you doing it in the first place? When I was trying to give up smoking years ago, I started using affirmations. You know, I'm a non-smoker. I don't smoke anymore, blah, 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 blah. I, what I didn't realize was that the intellect, the thinking mind, has no way of distinguishing negatives or... or like, so when I say I'm not smoking anymore, all I can hear is smoking. And I wondered what, 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 I, what I was doing was, it was kind of confusing to me, but I was creating more of the energy that I didn't want. 
and kind of getting stuck and stuck in that loop, one after the other, I'm not smoking another. So I, until I realized I had to turn that around and make it into something like, I am honoring every cell of my body. I am breathing in love and light and cleansing. I am healing myself from whatever harmful addictions I might be holding on to in this particular moment. Well, until I recognized that, I was continuing on that cycle of negativity. I didn't realize that true power doesn't come from trying to get rid of something. True power comes from aligning myself with a higher consciousness. You take somebody like Gandhi, for example, this little old man with a few teeth, right? and this old ratty-looking robe that he used to wear all the time, homespun cotton, right? leading thousands of people on this salt march to the sea without any violence at all, and essentially breaking the back of the British Empire. That's power. Martin Luther King did something very, very similar. That's power. It doesn't require a whole lot of change, although transformation and change are part of it. I remember when I... Um, when I left the religious order that I had belonged to for a good part of my adult life, people asked me, are, are you still a Catholic? And I said, well, maybe the Pope doesn't think so, but I, I, I said, that's like asking me, am I still Irish? It was part of my heritage, part of how I learned, part of, part of, part of my being. However, when I look at, let's say, sacred scripture, or I look at a sacrament, or I look at something that I might have learned years and years and years and years ago, I look at it and I know it differently in my heart. There's been a transformation from what I thought, from the way I held on to a particular way of thinking, to what I might be thinking right now. In a sense, again, to reflect upon Ramesi's words, which are so beautiful, of bringing it to the Father of allowing myself to be in alignment with divine truth, to ask myself, what does this mean for me today? God or spirit or divine consciousness is what we might call the divine alchemist. And al alchemy in the Middle Ages was a way of, of wanting to finally find a way of turning lead into gold, of turning something that was cheap and expensive into something that was precious. And that's the essence, I believe, or one of the essences of this whole thing about transformation and power, power versus control. Cleaning the toilet can empower me if I do it with intention and do it with love. If I choose it to be an act of love. Thich Nhat Hanh was once, I remember listening to him speak one time, and he said, he said, the next time you do the dishes, imagine that each dish is a little baby Buddha. Oh. Instead of going, you know, and throwing it on the tray and drying them up, each, you know, this is a little baby Buddha. How gentle I'm going to be with that dish. How loving I'm going to be with it. How when I wipe it, I'm not going to be, I'm going to wipe it dry, wonderfully gentle, peaceful, nice. We could do that with anything. But I remember that line so beautifully. Imagine that each dish is a little baby Buddha. Imagine that each thing I do is the kind of like washing that little baby Buddha. Because so much of our growth is, is about, not about getting rid of something, but about transformation. Changing my way of thinking. And we have a wonderful model for that. Unfortunately, what happens with most of the models that really work in our lives is my intellect is always hungering for something more, something better, something bigger, something wider, something taller, something more dramatic. And so if I mention something like the St. Francis prayer, you say, oh yeah, that's really nice, I've, but I've heard that before. Give me something new, give me something better. But my mind goes, yeah, but my heart, my soul goes, wait a minute, what's there for me? And so let's just take a minute with that, if you don't mind. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace or in metaphysical or unity language, Lord, let me realize that I already am an instrument of your peace. That there's nothing you have to give me, it's already there, it's already true. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. 
Where there is lack, where there, where there is... Hatred is actually just something that's missing. It's a place where love ought to be, but it's not in my mind. It's a lack of... It's like, it's like darkness. Darkness is a nothing, right? Because once you turn on the light, it's not there anymore, right? Hatred is kind of like that. Once, once you open yourself to love and, and, and the transformational power of love, hatred is no longer there. It's like... Um, creativity in the vision of things when uh, Peace Pilgrim, whom some of you might be familiar with, who is a uh, wonderful angelic lady who made her transition a few years ago, but who is committed to bringing peace to the world. But one of the things she said which, which really resonates with me so much is that when enough people reach a state of inner peace, there will be no more war. When enough people reach a consciousness of inner peace, there will be no more war. And so reflecting on the metaphysical principle, all right, if it's going on out there, or if I see it out there, guess where it's coming from? It's coming from in here. And when this is, when my heart is in the right place, when my vision is of inner peace, when I have that, I am not going to be seeing violence or hatred or anxiety or fear or separateness out there. because it's already settled in here. Where there is injury, pardon. Who is it and what is it that I need to forgive today? What is there about me in my past, perhaps, that I need to forgive myself for? Because the only way this works is if I do that for myself, then I can do it for you. But if I'm not able, if I'm just wishful thinking, if it feels nice to me, but I can't do it for myself. I can't do it for you either. Where there is doubt, give me faith. Remember that wonderful biblical story, O oh Lord, they, that where the, um, the Roman soldier, centurion, says to Jesus, would you heal my servant? And Jesus says, fine, where you live. And he came, came across with this classic line that we've so messed up so messed up as kids and adults as well. Lord, I am not worthy that thou should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my servant shall be healed. And so for some reason we latched on to that thing of unworthiness and we say, oh, that's good. That's who we are. We're all unworthy. And we need to do something to make ourselves worthy, but, but nobody knows what that is because whatever, whatever you do is never enough. And all this guy was saying is, I don't want to bother you. You can, you can heal my servant from where you stand, even though it's five miles away. Don't bother going to my house. You can say the word and my servant shall be healed right now, right here. And I believe that. And I know that's true. Lord, I believe. Help thou my unbelief. It's not, it doesn't have anything to do with worthiness. It has to do with I don't want to bother you right now. You can work this miracle from where you stand. Where there's despair, give me hope. It's not a feeling. In the darkest of times, whatever we happen to be struggling with, the power of creation, the divine power within us can take us beyond what the darkness and the blackness of what my despair might happen to be, which all of us have experienced at some time or another in our lives. I can remember going through a really deep space of depression and I remember Margot saying to me that um, God is here. And I remember breaking down in tears and I said, God is gone. But something happened at that moment. Even though all of my feelings and all of my life experience said God is gone, that there was some part of me that knows that it isn't still there. I still love you with an everlasting love, no matter how you feel. No matter whether your feelings are in darkness or as far away as you can make them, right? I'm still here. Change darkness into light. Turn the light on. What happens to the darkness? It's not there anymore. 
sadness into joy. Sometimes I realize that even when my heart is breaking, because I can't love you as much as I would like to, there's a joyfulness that's hidden there someplace. There are times when I am on the edge of tears, and I couldn't tell you the difference between a tear of happiness and a tear of joy. It's just something going on within me and my connection with you that is producing something that goes beyond all thought, goes beyond all feelings. May I change lethargy into action, pettiness into gratitude. I've got a whole other sermon here, but I'm not going to give it to you tonight. I'll save it for another time. Let me just say quickly that another aspect of transformation is the power of creation, or another aspect of power is the power of creation. And we are always creating, just like that song says, we're always praying. But my question, I guess, is what are we praying for? What are we praying to? So we're either creating by default, unconsciously. That's why the, wor that's why the world we're living in right now is so nutso, right? We've created it without thinking about it. It's created out of a lower, con lower vibrational consciousness of my ego, right? that produces things that produce even more fear, separation, separateness, anger, closed. So what I'm, again, what I'm, what I'm creating with unconsciously is the world that I see right now. I can change that. I can make that different. You can make that different. By realizing that every moment of every day we have a choice we make. How do I choose? Do I choose, do I choose love or do I choose fear? Do I choose the projection of love or do I choose the projection of fear, fearfulness? Am I an instrument of peace or am I an instrument of outrage? I think I shared with you, I know I shared this with a class a while ago. One of my favorite bumper stickers was, if you're not outraged, you're not paying attention. And I went, yeah, that's me, I'm outraged. And I had to say, where's my outrage getting me? Just more outrage. Am I willing to let go of seeming what seems to be more important to my physical, mental, ego-centric self? Am I willing to let go of that to be a participant in higher divine consciousness? So I'll end with the beginning of my question this morning. What empowers you? Whatever it is, simple as it might happen to be, what empowers you? Do it more often. And knowing that whatever you, whenever you do that more often, you are creating the space where you can make other things into, into visions or actions of empowerment as well. You can do anything as an act of love or as an act of empowerment. It's a choice we have. Do I do it unconsciously or do I do it in reality? Who am I to choose one way or the other? Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Lord, let me know that I already am an instrument of your peace. And re when I forget, please, please, please remind me. May all beings be at peace. May all beings be free of suffering. May all beings remember who they are. Have a wonderful week. Thanks.